Let's get a check now of the latest when it comes to Hurricane Dorian with meteorologist Candace Campos and oh, Troy Bridges. It's the slowest play-by-play -play Ryan has ever done, <laughs> right? Seriously. <laughs> Sports doesn't move this slow, all right? But it is moving. Let's talk about the big change as of the 8 a.m. update. The movement northwest at one mile per hour. It's better than zero, right, folks? We are expecting it to make that turn towards the north and just skirt the east coast of central Florida over the next couple of hours. Winds down to 120 miles per hour. Can't believe we're saying down to 120 miles per hour, but when you compare it to it's roaring at 185, like Troy and I were talking about, this has weakened considerably. It's still turning over the same waters. It's starting to cool off its waters. Therefore, it's starting to weaken. So let's look at the close-up timeline. If you're just waking up, maybe heading to work, you're wondering, so what's different about Dorian today? One, it has weakened. Two, it has moved. And three, the cone has shrunk. This doesn't mean that the wind field of Dorian has shrunk. This just means that the probability of where the eye can move has become a little more certain. So again, it looks like as of right now, all of Central Florida is now in the clear for no direct hit, no direct landfall from Dorian. That still doesn't mean we're completely in the clear. It is still going to be a rough 24 hours ahead, pretty much between early tomorrow morning throughout tomorrow afternoon, as it still maintains category three strength of winds of 120 miles per hour. Again, you can see this system is still as large and in charge as it was yesterday. And the wind field has actually extended even more since this eyewall replacement has been happening. It's really starting to kind of lose its, its um, sym symmetry when it comes to that eyewall. So it tends, tends to expand and even weaken a little bit, hence why we are seeing those winds down a little bit. So this is the wind timeline as of the uh, 8 o'clock update. And of course, we'll love to bring in uh, Troy to kind of break this down for many folks because you can see here that the sustained winds of tropical storm force winds have shifted. Yes. But that still doesn't mean that areas further to, the, to our west won't yeah. be feeling at least wind gusts. I about. love how you put it, where you look at this line, that would be the eye of the storm. And within that cone, that line can move all the way east or west. So if it it moves to the west, that means that even though we're not in the cone, the eye would be in the cone and that would possibly put it a few miles off of our coast. And you're talking about a major category three hurricane. If off our coast by just a few miles, it would extend those tropical storm force winds far inland and of course the chance for gusts up to hurricane force. These would be sustained winds at tropical storm force, but we are seeing gusts extend 160 miles from the center. So sustained winds means constant. But gusts, of course, you know, means that we would have those gusts up to tropical storm force, depending on how close it is to us, far inland into our western county. So we have to watch for that. The winds right now, not gusting inland, but along the coast in Brevard, where, of course, we'll see the impacts first. Already, as you've seen our reporters in Melbourne, Cocoa Beach, those winds are sustained at nearly 20 miles per hour, but gusting at more than 30, getting close to 35 miles per hour. Now, here's the rain. These are the outer bands of rain with two inches coming down. Orange County Freedom and University High Schools are both down an hour where you see some of these isolated pet friendly and special needs red pockets. That's Sanford right now. Shelters, East River, Lake Nona, Oak Ridge, and also Longwood and Altamont Springs Winter Park. Coe High Schools are also pet friendly. You can Lockhart, downtown Orlando, where you can find the full list of shelter locations on click. Seeing the orange, that's about a half inch to an inch. Orlando.com. And people an hour coming down light rain for New Smyrna Beach who live along the Georgia coastal communities are we're also pinpointing some light rain for Sharps Cape Canaveral saying they look more like ghost towns right now Cocoa Beach and Rockledge more of that rain will be built oh, this is crazy businesses mm -hmm. are boarded up as building in as we see it coming in waves there's they watch Dorian's path move north even though downtown Orlando Winter Park and Altamont Spring oh, it is slow hundreds of people so rain will be a factor first and of course I plan to evacuate these areas Areas today. As this is now on the move, it is about coastal Georgia is under mandatory 147 miles at least free evacuation and much of St. Simmons. The center is from Cape Canaveral. Simmons Island just south of Savannah is we'll be watching closely that exact track now. It's already shut down as rain moves in. That we've seen it move. We'll get a new track at 11. Many business owners.